Today we will be taking T notes on DNA, which stands for deoxyribonucleic acid. It is found in the chromosomes and it contains the genetic material which helps to determine which proteins to make, which will help us to do all of the many processes in order to replicate, to grow, to reproduce, and to just survive. DNA is also known as a polymer, which just pretty much means it's a large molecule. And it is made up of monomers, which are smaller molecules. And these are called nucleotides. A polymer is, again, what I just said, a large molecule. And it's made of many smaller molecules called monomers. A nucleotide is a kind of monomer. And it is just a simple unit. And these make up DNA. Now, to be more specific about what DNA is made of, it is simply a repeating pattern of units called nucleotides. There are three parts to each nucleotide. In order to have a nucleotide, you must have a nitrogen-containing base, and there are four different kinds that exist within the DNA. Adenine is one, and it's denoted as the capital A. Guanine, G. Cytosine, C. And thymine, T. The second component of a nucleotide is the deoxyribose sugar molecule. The third and last component is the phosphate group. If you look over here, this is one example of a nucleotide. It has the sugar molecule, it has the phosphate group, and it is connected to a nitrogen base, and in this case, this one is cytosine. Let me show you a larger picture of some DNA with multiple nucleotides attached to each other because remember DNA is made of repeating units that are all connected. So here we have DNA and in this structure we have a ladder and notice here that we have adenine, we have thymine, we have guanine and cytosine and these ladders are all connected together with hydrogen bonds and along the sides, this is what is creating we call the backbone. And it is a sugar phosphate backbone because we have phosphates connected to sugars. And the sugar is connected to a nitrogen-containing base. And notice that these bases change. And this is what creates some of the variation. Again, here is where the nucleotide exists. So each one of these that have the three components is called a nucleotide. And then DNA is merely a connection of all of these nucleotides that are then bonded together by hydrogen in the center here. The shape of DNA is that of a double helix. So notice that we have two sugar phosphate backbones, and within them we have the nitrogen-containing bases that are connected by the hydrogen bonds, and they're all twisted together. This is just a flashback to remind you where the DNA is located. Remember, DNA is winded together into a spiral, tight spirals, and those are in chromosomes, which are then found inside of a cell's nucleus. Notice again how you have these connections between each of the nitrogen-containing bases. And then, of course, the sugar and phosphate groups are here, making up the backbones on each side of the ladder. When looking at the nitrogen-containing bases and how they are paired, there is actually order within how they can be paired. Adenine always joins with thymine. Guanine always joins with cytosine. So here we have the hydrogen bonds connecting thymine and adenine. And notice here we have this order of thymine, adenine, thymine, adenine. But then when you go down here, it goes to cytosine and guanine. And then it switches, and over on this side, we have adenine with thymine still, but just flipped onto the other side. And then the same thing here with cytosine and guanine, we see guanine with cytosine. So these combinations of adenine joining with thymine, guanine joining with cytosine on either side of the ladder, this is what creates all the variation we see in the world today. DNA replication is the process where DNA is copied. Proteins carry out this process of DNA replication. It's fast, it's accurate, and it's occurring at different places on the same DNA strand. 
we need to replicate in order to grow, in order to rebuild and heal, and we need it to reproduce. As you can see here, this is an example of DNA replication. Notice how the parent DNA is being split and then further down we notice that there is another helical bond that is occurring on both sides of the one strand that had been split. This is DNA replication. Let's talk about the steps. The first step is that enzymes break or unzip the hydrogen bonds that are in the original DNA. And so the hydrogen bonds, remember, are between the nitrogen bases. So if we look here, here we have an original DNA strand, and then there will be an enzyme that comes in and separates the nitrogen-containing bases apart from each other. And this brings us to step two, which then we have the DNA strands opening up. In step three, we now have free nucleotides coming in in order to fill in the open spaces. So again, remember, adenine always joins up with thymine, and cytosine always joins up with guanine. So here we have this um, puzzle piecing going on, and then this is going to create two identical pairs as seen here. Step four, we have the phosphate and sugar joining up in order to form the sides of the new strand. So here we have um, the phosphate and the sugars. Remember that they will join in onto the nitrogen-containing bases. And now we have each daughter DNA molecule having one parental strand, which is in the dark blue, and the inside one is the new strand that has been added. Step five, the two DNA molecules that have been pulled apart and then added in with new nucleotides, they become twisted again in order to fold back in into that supercoil that we know um, will fit into the chromosome. And so this creates again the double helix shape, which is what is showing here and over here. All right, we've reached the end of our video T-notes. Please make sure you understand this content and that you're prepared to use this in class next. Thank you for watching.